Off the Wall Productions is proud to present Voices of the Methow. This is a series of conversations with interesting folk in and around the valley. Hey, this is Byron, and I have my lovely wife Raven here with me, as well as another gorgeous woman, Carolyn Schmeckel. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Byron. It's great to be here. Yes, it is. I mean, going to look forward to this. Yeah, me too. We are going to be talking about chemical sensitivities and the challenges of doing your best to avoid them day to day, as well as the impact on your body, mind, and spirit. Let's start with both of you giving a brief introduction and perhaps describing when you first noticed sensitivities occurring. Let's start with you, Carolyn. Well, I've lived here since 1986, and it started in the early 1990s by a series of what I'd call unfortunate events. Um, one of the things that happened was I was stung by a multitude of bald-faced wasps. Nearly died. That was when Doc Henry was the doctor around here. Oh, and yeah. Glenn drove me lickety-split down to his office, and um, he told a story about a guy that was at Perigen Lake and was stung by a bee and died in five minutes. That was really helpful, just to let you know his bedside manner. <laughs> Um, anyway, but having gone through that, then the other thing that happened, there was kind of a, a series of different things, but one of the things, we had a, a serious flu that kind of went around the valley. I was probably as sick as I'd ever been, and there were a number of other people here in the valley that got the same virus. Don't know what it was exactly, um, but a lot of us got quite ill, and it was following that that I began to have some issues. Right. Okay. And how about you, Raven? When did you first notice uh, sensitivity showing up? Well, I think it started because actually I was cesarean. So I think I got a hit first, first thing. Uh, Cause of course they had to knock my mom out to take me out. Um, but what I really noticed something as an adult was when I lived in, we lived in Colorado and I was cleaning hot tubs. What happened as far as the symptom was I had this particular pain in the side of my neck and I went to doctors, I went to chiropractors, I went to all these people and nobody could figure it out. I was, it was on, um, uh, workman's comp because it, it was work related. I was you know, doing this job. So I just thought it's physical. I'm, I'm hurting myself. Finally, I quit doing that job. The pain went away. Oh, which reminds me, I had a chlorine sensitivity as a child in swimming pools. I had a reaction to chlorine. I was dealing with these hot tub chemicals. I stopped and the pain in my neck went away. That pain, when it would ever come back, I knew that it was chemically related. And for instance, once on Whidbey Island, I went into a secondhand store. I bought a raincoat. I put it in the car, and it had perfume on it, and my neck hurt in that same exact way, in that same exact place. And so I got rid of the car, the coat, and my neck quit hurting. Um, so uh, that was when I first noticed it. So, okay. And, and now I'm wondering about, have you had challenges with, the, with diagnosing these sensitivities at all? Well, the diagnosing is probably just about impossible because with the types of way we relate to diseases, it's usually an organ or it's usually a germ or something along those lines. This is actually an immune system issue. And if there's been some compromise along the way, and in my case, and this has reminded me that you know, for a few years of my life, I lived in a very smoggy area. And that was in the n actually late 50s, early 60s, when the area around Los Angeles, and I, I didn't live in Los Angeles, but all that smog from there came into my town, which is Arcadia. Um, and it was really bad sometimes. They had level three. You had to stay home from school. I was breathing that. I remember my circles under my eyes and feeling like my throat was raw. Um, I'd get in the mornings, I, my mother could barely get me up for school. Uh, so in my junior high, high school years, that's where I lived rather than the fresh environment I was from, which was North San Diego County, didn't have smog problems. I believe that 
just like Raven mentioned, my issues probably were, there was a compromise early on with a lot of heavy stuff. The other thing is I was, I painted, and I painted with, um, I loved oil paints. And so I used all those, I just loved the smell of linseed oil and turpentine and stuff like that that I had to use for my art. And so I painted for years until I was almost 30 years old. I'm sure there was a lot of issues there too. So over time, I think my body just finally said, yeah, we've had it. Uh, and that series of events I was discussing was probably the precipitating thing. So I went to probably two years, different situations, different physicians, different people. It's very, very discouraging. Um, and I'm just going to say this. It might sound sexist, but it tends to, you're a woman, and you've got stuff in your head. You just... It's just your, I don't know, hormones, or it's, you know, this or that. If a guy complains about this stuff, they'll really try to go after it. That's my opinion, okay? I'm just saying. Right, right. But I do think that when a woman begins to say, well, gee, I don't know. I just, I feel dizzy. For a while there, I was dizzy and felt like I was always going into a wall. I would feel so weak. I'd, I felt like I had to crawl to the bathroom. Um. So I was, I did the, the Epstein-Barr test. I did all the stuff what they called chronic fatigue. And, of course, they said, nope, you don't have that. Um, there was a number of things. They tested me all over the place, and so it had to be psychological, except that I couldn't work anymore, and I couldn't go into certain stores, a lot of stores, and it really affected what I ate, too, a lot of the things that I ate that I never was allergic to. I used to eat tomatoes and peppers and all that stuff, loved it, couldn't touch it. Right. Well, that, yeah, I, that, that's a lot, covering a lot of ground right there. How about you, Raven? What, what is uh, I haven't been diagnosed except through self-diagnosis, uh, which is difficult because you're constantly thinking you're making something up, at least that was my experience. I was constantly thinking, I must be making this up, except that the same things would happen over and over again. And I forget, I forget that I can't go into groups of people until I'm in the middle of it and I have to leave. And that happens over and over again. I will go to an event and go, oh, I can't be here because I either get a headache or my throat got raw. I got a completely different system, symptom last time. Um, and I had a hard time breathing. Um, uh, my stomach will hurt. I'll get the pain in my neck. Fog brain is the worst. Cannot think. Cannot. It, it, and it truly is a disability. And it's it's a disability that no one can see, so it's hard to be believed. And I think particularly as a woman, Carolyn, it, there's a challenge there. <laughs> Just to speak a little bit more to that, when you're in, in the situation of being in a group, what are you finding that you're reacting to? Do you have any kind of sense of what, what's oh, causing I, it? Well, I know there are certain things, strong smelling um, laundry items. I, I ha going into the grocery store, I can't even go down the laundry aisle. People go, well, how do you clean your clothes? Well, I buy unfragranced laundry products. Um, dryer sheets, oh my gosh. Hair products, perfumes. Uh, perfumes are designed to cling. They're designed to cling like a germ <laughs> so they'll cling to someone else's clothes uh, for instance um my mom uh shares property with us and she'll come home from something and she'll come straight over to my house and she's reeking of someone else's perfume she has not put this on i have to open the windows up she can be in the house for three minutes i open the windows up for five minutes i can still smell it after she leaves it's designed to, st to to stay in an environment or to cling onto clothing the specific chemicals that are being used that I'm reacting to, I have no idea. That would take, there are so many chemicals in the fragrances that are being produced. To eliminate them, I don't even know how you'd go about doing that. That would 
you know, so th- so there are a number of things. And then there are things I know I can use. I do hair and I have products that I know I can use. I have a non-toxic line of color and, and uh, shampoos and conditioners and things that I can use because most of them I can't. Right. So right. let's let's just talk about one thing, for example, mm. that's constantly used. Chamomile. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with chamomile. Mm-hmm. Chamomile tea. You put stuff in maybe, you know, hand lotion. Mm-hmm. It's been in hair products. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that I had issues with chamomile. It's also in the daisy family. I find out that echinacea and all these lovely things that people, you know, they're wonderful. But they say, oh, this is a natural product. Yeah, it's a natural product. Perfumes, the base is usually an oil that's a natural product. Essential oils, for example, have to, could be very dangerous to me. Mm-hmm. People are using them. A lot of times somebody will walk by me that I know uses a, an essential oils product and I have to literally leave. It's kind of surprising we don't talk about it much because it seems rude or you don't want to get into it because you have to explain and then every, they're looking at you with owl eyes like, you know, really, what? That's nuts. Because unless you've experienced it, or you are close to someone that experiences it, you, you just can't imagine that it could be that debilitating. And in fact, I'm sure that there's members of my own family who just think that I'm a little weird mm-hmm. because they haven't had it happen to them yet. And I will say that as we get older, these things do crop up because basically our bodies are not able to to deal with a lot of these environmental things as much as we did when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll speak to that a little bit myself. I've had some challenges with wheat products, for example, and it's been a long road, uh, you know, to to self-diagnosis and and whatnot, and and through the medical profession trying to diagnose it as well. Our bodies are complex, and some sometimes some I can get away. Sometimes I can even feel sometimes when I can when I can fudge if I want to eat that sandwich or that you know whatever it is that I know. It's other times it it will trigger a a stronger reaction. Uh, so our bodies are complex and, you know, things, you know, what I'm saying. Let's go on to um, coping strategies. Like, Carolyn, what, what, are you, what do you do to cope with the sensiti- this, these sensitivities? Well, can I, uh, actually, this is part of the coping, but can I go back to the medical thing? Sure. Because I spent quite a bit of time with this, and one of the things that happened to me I nearly died several times, Mm -hmm. I have to say. Uh, There were some serious emergencies. I don't know how Glenn has lived through it all, but (laughs) he's managed. Um, But what really, really helped was finding a physician, a doctor. He was a medical doctor in Yakima. Uh, I'm not going to mention who it is. He may have retired by now. But I began, I found him through uh, someone who had also had a lot of issues and said, you know, I've been going to that person for a while, and it, it's just amazing what he does. It was a big deal for me to think, I'm going to go to Yakima. It's a you know, round trip of almost five hours. I'm going to commit to a program. And he was not just, he was a medical doctor, but also holistic in that he used whatever worked. Because he really felt like a lot of these things, there might not be... Somebody didn't take it to a lab and figure it all out. But if it's working for you, it's working. So um, practical in that way. Practical. Yeah. So I went to him for 15 years. And I can honestly say that what he did and all this whole process and understanding of all this, because he would see, you know, a, a physician might find somebody like Raven and I you know, once every several years. So they really don't know how to deal with it. It's just, it's not the norm. This man would say 300 people, you know, in a couple of years. Big difference. Well, yeah, that's, and that, I'm glad you you mentioned that because that was a great way. That is definitely a part of the coping strategy Mm -hmm. is to find someone who can help you to to, uh, understand and to, make sense of some of the some of the the uh, things that are going on as well as maybe educate you to, as, as to what to stay away from and and fine-tune how about you raven you 
My cro- coping strategy has been one of don't make waves, uh, generally. So I, I get up and leave. I just don't say anything and I leave. I may apologize after and explain why I left, but I just try to leave. I don't feel like it's my place to tell people what they should do. So <laughs> I just feel like I need to protect myself and get out. I have attempted uh, with family, I have attempted to take care of myself and it backfired and um, family members were put off by it and uh, upset with me and it caused a rift and it's um, it's really painful. It's very difficult when that happens. For me, part of my coping strategy is to avoid the detergent aisle. It's to avoid situations where I know there will be people if I am thinking of that ahead of time. Sometimes I'm so excited about an event. For instance, I was going to be a precinct captain for our district. I went to the meeting. Maybe there were 30 people there in the community center, a large room. There was so much perfume in, I don't know how many women had perfume on, but there was so much perfume, I had to leave. Part of being a precinct captain is that you need to attend these meetings. I can't do that. I am disabled. I am disabled to the degree that I can't participate in that way. So part of my coping strategy is just simply to avoid or to to leave. Sometimes, like in the situation with the family member, I attempt in a clumsy way to try to take care of myself and it can backfire. That's why I'm glad we're doing this because I think that people's awareness needs to be brought to this issue because I think Carolyn and I are just the canaries in the coal mine. I heard that. And um, we have different symptoms. We react to different things. I don't react to chamomile. Doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people. I had a client who asked me if any of the shampoo I used had chamomile in it because she has a reaction to it. Someone else, so it didn't surprise me when you said that. Well, I can probably speak to some of this avoidance issue. We are, uh, Glenn and I are out lots with people. And one of the things that I've learned to do because probably my worst issues aren't so much the sense, although if you wanna know, I can literally taste it it so absorbs into me, I can taste it. I can get nauseous, I will get a headache, I will get dizzy. This is exactly what Raymond was talking about. And I will lose my words. Uh, it's, it's a brain fog. Mm-hmm. And it can happen fairly rapidly. And it's just, for, for people who haven't experienced that, they, it just seems too weird for words, but it's real. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been dealing with, like I said, since the early you know, 1990s. So. I'm comfortable with talking about it, but I also realize that it's very hard for people to understand. But with me, it's my job for a number of years as interior designer was to go into people's homes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people use air fresheners. Mm-hmm. Those The plug-in kinds are the worst because they're oil-based. That oil, the same thing as in perfumes, that radiates into the room, I would not be able to even go into the room. Another thing I'm a, I have a reaction to is the gypsum that's in drywall. Mm-hmm. I've been around construction so many years, and you've got all kinds of things where you've got your wood, your um, glue lamps, all the things that are being used, you know, just to glue things together or to put on your floors, um, all these different things that have this that comes off. And I, I do have a fun story to tell because many years ago I was with the Ethan Allen Galleries and I had done a custom sofa for a woman and uh, it was delivered. And within a few days after it was delivered to this woman, they brought it back and she says, I don't know what's wrong. I'm getting headaches. I'm feeling sick ever since that sofa came into our house. And at that time, we did not know about um, the emissions Mm -hmm. that came off the fabric Mm -hmm. and off of our carpets and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you have to think, I've been working around that stuff Mm -hmm. for the last 40 some years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, basically it's um, probably the best visual I have that was given to me by, by my doctor in Yakima was when you've got a dammed up river and it takes a lot of water. You can have a, 
a flood, you can have a hurricane, you can have all kinds of things filling that dam up. And when it gets right to the top, you can just have the smallest cloud drip a little bit of water and it will pour over the okay. dam. And so that's the best way to talk about your immune system when it's been so compromised that then all of a sudden this little thing triggers that overflow. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're taking care of yourself, what you're trying to do is whatever it takes to build up your immune system. And I will say this, and I'm going to speak for naturopaths, and I'm going to say that they're the ones that work with this probably best, and that's not a negative. It just happens that it, in that particular discipline, uh, this is the kind of stuff they focus in on. And um, so, you know, that's my experience anyway for the last many years. All right. I have uh, three stories if I can keep them in my head. I worked at a fabric store. Me too. Formaldehyde. I couldn't go into a fabric store after I quit. I couldn't go into one. If I was in it for a minute, I was having reactions and had to get out. It took years. Now I can go back into them, but it took years. Formaldehyde, one of those things, really they bad. By the way, legally, they can't use that anymore. Not anymore, but they but did at one why. time. Yeah. Um, and I asked an exec from the fabric store. He was in the store. I asked him about it. Anybody you know, have you heard of this? And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> well, I was one of those people that was reacting. Another time, uh, we were visiting my mom in Vancouver. Uh, her friend used those fragrance things through all throughout her house. Uh, we walked up to the door. She, I could smell it from the walkway. She hadn't even opened the door yet. My mom went in. I stood outside for a minute, and I, I knew I couldn't go in the house. Immediately, I was sick to my stomach. I had a headache. I walked back to my mom's house. It took me, I don't know, half an hour or so to, to, to over. feel okay. That was not even going into the house that was standing outside. So there's a store that I can go in, that I go into, uh, and the, the fish is uh, at the end of the meat counter where the, where the end of the soap aisle is. And I can taste the chemicals on the fish. So I can't buy fish, fresh fish anymore because the chemical permeates the plastic and I can taste it. I even uh, got the same taste from a vegetable. So I went to the back into the back and asked them about it. Are they using some kind of hand cleaner? Are they using something before they handle the food? And they reassured me they weren't. And so I even have to be careful that way. Because when you said taste it, I was like, oh, yeah, on certain things, I can taste it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. different from what you were describing in terms of it permeating your body and you'd be able to taste it on your tongue. But so, I can taste it. So here's, here's the next step. Uh, some of us don't need to use makeup. Some of us really should. <laughs> 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 and uh, I was always the really should part. I have a lot of the particular brands that I found that I could use, they'll change it. Ah, okay. And so something I relied on gets changed, and now I have to find something else. I can tell you the reaction that happens to me. Um, I've had several besides tingling skin, besides, you know, something turning you know, red. Another very interesting reaction with when I tried a different brand is my cheek that I just tried it on a little part of my cheek it felt like it was going to fall off my face I mean literally it felt like it was paralyzing my face oh. so no telling because people you know these cosmetic companies are very closed about what they put in they'll say it's you know hypo hypoallergenic but you know we're talking sensitivities here well, it sounds we don't like know. natural flavorings and they to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They regulate themselves. Yeah. There is yeah. no regulation except industry regulation, mm -hmm. which, my little political plug, it doesn't work because that's what happens. You ha And you have no way of finding out. Of knowing, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got something that I'd like to bring up uh, and, and to have you speak to would be, um, Carolyn, you had mentioned before uh, as far as you said you didn't have as much trouble um, speaking about the, the sensitivities to people or things like that. Um, so, so the fact that people choose to wear perfume and co cologne in public and that it seriously affects your ability to attend meetings, see performances, how do you feel about that? Well, 
for a little while we had a, a activist at our church this was a number of years ago who also had sensitivities and was uh, everywhere she went for public situations where people gathered she was um, campaigning for a section that was fragrance free which is good a good thing except for some of us that isn't even enough mm -hmm. right and so just like raven um a perfect example i went you know i if, if i a certain person who does a history class <laughs> every <laughs> year <laughs> Uh, I was actually able to attend Bill's history class this oh, okay. year. Your, your name really and names. Happy. Okay, good, I'm really good, happy. Good. He'll be happy. Everybody knows. Anyway, so. anyway, but I walk in, and I could tell that I needed to sit way in the back. <laughs> right. Where I either could escape or be far away from people. And um, so I'm happy to share that with people because they wonder, well, you know, Carolyn isn't really a quiet a retiring individual but it may look like i am just because i am positioning myself strategically for the door um you know that kind of thing so there's something behind what's what's going on 90 percent of the time i don't feel a need to say anything to somebody uh about why or what i'm doing that's a little different but one of the things that's happened in the last couple of years, and it's frankly, it's eased to me. Uh, it's made life easier for me. And that has to do with all the wonderful potlucks and all the wonderful gathering around food because I have serious food sensitivities. And I'm never sure if somebody puts a sauce on something or they'll say, oh, this is fine. And then I'll find out they have just doused it with some sort of seasoning uh, I mean there's just no way it's like Russian roulette so as much as I love to see friends and be at social gatherings you will either see me not eat at all or I don't go and then I will have people who in a this is just really gracious you know well let's find something you can eat well you know it really won't starve me to not eat. I'll be fine. And I am so much freer and I'm so much more able to visit than I am to be wondering when this thing is going to hit me. Because I'll eat something and maybe it won't start bothering me until 15 minutes afterwards. Or as one case in point where I was helping in the kitchen and I happened to, uh, probably my worst is... Um, peppers or uh, jalapenos or any kind of peppers really and I, I used to just love them but I actually touched it was um, jal jelly um, jalapeno jelly and I touched the knife that somebody had put some and I didn't know it and all of a sudden I, my whole body started to react just from touching it mm -hmm. and I well you might notice me not helping in people's kitchens, okay? And it's not because I don't want to be helpful, but I just never sure. Right. And in my own home, I feel safe. And there is a certain amount of anxiety after you've had things triggered too many times. Your body, even if your mind says, you know, this is okay, it's safe, it's all right, but your body develops this kind of well it's ptsd is you know to put right, it in right. absolutely simply um and i'm sure that glenn has some of it because he's <laughs> had to you know <laughs> we've had some pretty serious reactions to food in restaurants so we don't go out to eat mm -hmm. he loves to go out to eat and i feel really bad and i really appreciate the fact that he has to put up with this you've got a good partner yes i do yeah something that comes up for me now, because actually my chemical sensitivities are lessened living here. They were much worse on Whidbey Island because my immune system was overloaded between the mold, which is just permeating the whole island. When we moved, when we moved here, I would go back every six weeks to see clients. I had a great clientele over there. I would hit the island and my body would go in reaction. As soon as I hit the island, it was in my car. It was amazing. So I tend to think I was making it up. 
except that I kept going back for a little over a year. The longer I was here, the longer I could be on the island before I started having reactions. But the PTSD part is that I don't even have to smell it. When I was in beauty school, my partner, we shared a a station. And he was really conscientious and, you know, knew about my sensitivities and and was respectful about it. One morning, he walks in and comes up to me, and I immediately get a headache. Immediately. And I said, did you do something different this morning? And he thought about it, and he said, yeah, I changed whatever it was. I hadn't smelled it, but my body registered it, whatever that chemical was. So it's not about that something smells. It is whatever chemicals are in it. So what happens for me is that when I do smell something, perfume on somebody or cologne on somebody, I immediately go into anxiety mentally. The first thing that happens is I'm on red alert because, okay, is this something I'm going to react to? Then I have to talk myself down and go, okay, just wait and see. And then I leave (laughs) if it's something I'm reacting to. Internally, nobody would know that's going on with me, but that's going on with me. I'm going to bring up kind of another thing that when you talked about Woodby Island, the issue of mold is big. And a lot of times people may be experiencing, and I think a lot of people have sensitivities or even allergies. They're a little different. Uh, that they might not realize. And one of the things is uh, if mold, for example, if there gets mold down in my sink, if I'm not taking care of that, I'll stand over the sink and I'll start feeling sick. The first thing that hits me is nausea. And then that's my alert that says something around here. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, if I know where I am, I know why. But another thing has to do with your typical allergies. Well, some people think runny nose, itchy eyes, you know, throat, itchy throat, whatever. That's just first stage stuff. When the alder over on the west side is Mm -hmm. in bloom, Mm -hmm. I literally cannot go there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unless I had like, prednisone or something I I literally cannot go during that season same thing happens in Texas we have a daughter in Texas and there's a certain time when all the trees there it's eastern Texas lots of trees they're just all of them full of pollen serious serious debilitating situation and so I have to be careful where I travel what I eat and probably the biggest I'm glad I love the Medhow Mm-hmm. Because the biggest thing, I'm a, I'm a person who I'd be a world traveler. Mm-hmm. I, w- I just love going places and seeing things. Um, but the eating and food issues and all of these sensitivities keep you close to home. I'm glad I love my home mm-hmm. and, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you do get to where you get to be a bit of a hermit sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, this is really a good topic, and and we're just t- we're just basically scratching the surface. I know, but um, uh, is there anything that um that we've missed or you'd like to add to uh, the conversation before we we wrap up for today? Yeah, I think awareness is big, and thank you, Byron, for even thinking of this. I appreciate it. Awareness is big, and the, but the big thing is. I don't know how Raven feels, but I don't want people worrying about me because I've been at this for a long time. I've figured out a lot of stuff and I really can manage myself and I'll let people know, oh, this isn't going to work or I need to go somewhere or I can't go to that. And it's never about the other person. It's just my, it's what I have to do. And there really isn't anything medically other than just probably keeping yourself as healthy as you can, keeping yourself cleansed, keeping yourself away from things that would overload your immune system. One of them is stress, frankly. And frankly, there's a lot of stress with this particular issue. But if, if you listen to this and you say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I noticed that about me, then, you know, start looking at the potential that it's 
it's possibly and it is not exactly something that you can go to your doctor and say here's all the things that are going on and they really it's just really taking care of yourself in a good way right right how about you raven you yeah that's the reason i leave is because i don't want to be putting my issue on someone else other people should be able to enjoy their perfumes or whatever so i just try to take care of myself i mean i pref i would prefer to be able to go anywhere I want to go. And I just accept that that's not going to happen for me. One thing I did re was reminded of uh, you sing. I had I used to sing <laughs> a lot. Mm. Um, and people that sing and that are in choruses or group singing, mm -hmm. they know about never mm -hmm. wearing perfume mm -hmm. or anything because that's where y you can lose your voice. You can literally... Mm -hmm. You know, and so people who are singers are very conscious of this sort of thing. And a lot of other people probably don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do want to thank you, Byron, uh, for creating a forum for this because uh, it's, you know, I think it affects more than Carolyn and I. And it certainly affects our loved ones. So. Yeah, that's yeah yeah that's that's well thank you let me say that and i just want to say that you know walking down the soap aisle in the grocery store is not my favorite place to hang out in fact i've for years i've held my breath um going through that and that's folks that's a heads up i gotta say i'm sure you know what i'm talking about we're gonna wrap up for for today would you guys be willing to come back and maybe talk a little bit more about this or if there's more to say Sure. sure. If if <laughs> if there's this wild demand. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if our audience is clamoring demand. for us, right. Carolyn. If your audience is clamoring. Okay. All right, cool. So this is Byron. And Raven. And Carolyn. Saying So, so long, long for now, now and, and keep, keep it on, on the route. route. You've been listening to Voices of the Methow, an off the wall production. Until next time, thanks for listening.